Hello guys and welcome to this series of shell scripting. In this video we are going to look at various operations that can be performed on scalar variables. So let's begin. We know that to access a particular scalar variable there are two methods. The first one is without using the curly braces and the another one is using the curly braces. Now we need to use the curly braces to perform all the operations that we are going to talk about in this video. We will not be accessing the variable without the curly braces. Now the first operation is to find the length of the variable's value. For instance, currently the value holded by the variable where is today is Sunday. And if I want to find the length of this particular value, then we can use the pound symbol. Okay, so I'll write here echo dollar where and before where we can write here hash or pound sign. So in this case, it is going to print us 15 that is the number of characters present in its value. So if I execute our shell script, then you will see it is giving us 15, right? After that, if you want to print the substring, then you can use the colon. For instance, we can write here echo dollar where and after the where I will provide the colon and some number. For instance, if I write here 2, then the first two characters will be left and all the other characters will get printed. If I save our shell script and if I execute it, then you will see it is printing us from day is Sunday. It is basically skipping us first two characters. Similarly, if I write here, let's say 4, then it is going to skip first four characters and it will print us rest of the string or rest of the value. Now the first value after the colon is known as the offset. You can also provide here another colon and give their length. Now what is the purpose of length here? For instance, suppose if the length is given as 2. So it will print only the two characters or only the two characters after the offset defined. For instance, suppose I am writing here echo dollar where and giving here 2. So it will skip first two character and after that let's say I am writing here 5. So in this case it will first skip the first two characters that is defined by our offset and after that it is going to print us next 5 characters. So it is going to print us day then space and then i. So if I save it and again execute our shell script then you will see it is printing us day space i. Similarly, suppose if I am writing here 6, so after skipping first two characters, only print the next six characters. That is defined by the length parameter. So if I save it and again execute our shell script, then you will see it is printing us the next six characters. Now after that, if you want to remove some prefix patterns, then you can write here echo dollar where and after that provide here hash and after hash we need to provide here pattern for which it will look into the string and if it present in the string then that will be removed for instance suppose i am writing here today so in the prefix of this variable's value this strings will be tried to be matched and if it is present then this will get removed okay so the output will be space then is sunday so let's save it and if we again execute our shell script then you will see the pattern today is matching with the prefix of our string so it is getting removed now suppose instead of today i am writing here w today so in this case our pattern is not going to be matched and the output will be complete string that is today is sunday because our pattern is not match so after where hash is used to remove the minimum pattern match now what i mean by minimum here is that suppose we have a pattern with h asterisk all right now in this case if i ask you what is going to be the minimum string that is going to be matched with this particular pattern you can simply say here h right so h is going to be matched with the h asterisk now similarly let's suppose we have another pattern with h asterisk and now I am asking you what is going to be the maximum string that will be matched with this particular pattern. Then you can provide here h then any particular characters, right? So in this case, h is the minimum string that is matching with the h asterisk pattern. While the other string that is h, s, a and d, etc. is the maximum string that is matching with the h asterisk pattern, right? So when we use the single hash, then the minimum matching pattern from the prefix is going to be removed 
if it is going to be matched. But if I am going to use the double hash, then the maximum matching pattern will get removed. For instance, suppose I am writing here hash, then t and then asterisk. t asterisk is our pattern. And similarly, I am going to write here double hash with the t asterisk, right? Let me remove these two strings from here. And now what will happen in this particular case, t asterisk is going to match with this entire string, correct? But if I am going to ask you what is going to be the minimum length within this string, which is going to be matched with this particular pattern, you can simply say it is only t. But if the question is what is going to be the maximum length that is going to be matched with this particular pattern, then this entire string is matching with this particular pattern, right? That is our maximum string match while hash will remove the minimum pattern match, okay, from the prefix. So if I save it and again execute our shell script, then you will see in the first case that is when I am using the hash, then it is only removing a one character that is the t, correct? Because the minimum string match with the t asterisk is going to be t only and all the other characters are not going to be removed. But when we are using the double hash, then it is removing the entire string because entire string is the match for this particular pattern okay now similar to prefix removal we also have the suffix removal from the string that is using the percent okay now for instance suppose i am writing here where percent and then giving here as a string when i am using here single percent then it will remove the minimum number of characters okay from the matching pattern and if i am going to use here double percent okay with the same pattern then it will remove the maximum string possible let's save it and again if i am going to execute it then you will see in the first case if we see what is the minimum match with the s asterisk as a pattern then this is our minimum match correct and if i am going to ask like what is the maximum match from the suffix that is going to match with this particular pattern that is s asterisk then this entire string will be the maximum match right so in the minimum match if you will see it is removing only the sunday and in the maximum match it is removing from the s then space then sunday that is our maximum removal after a pattern is match okay so single and double hash and single percent and double percent are only acts in a different way if you are using any particular wildcards in the pattern matching. If you are simply writing here any particular string, then there are not going to be any differences. For instance, suppose in the prefix pattern matched, I am simply writing here today and in the suffix part, I am going to write here Sunday. Then we will see the output for single and double hash and single and double percent are going to be same okay so these are helpful when you want to remove a particular prefix from the string or particular suffix from the string now apart from this we can use the forward slashes to look for a particular pattern in the string and remove it wherever it is present for instance i'll write here echo dollar then where and after that we will give here two forward slashes in between these two we will first define our pattern so for that let me write here only o and i need to remove it with the let's say j okay so let's save it and by default it is going to remove only the first that is going to be matched so right now the first is after the t that is o okay and i am going to use here some other o also so i'll write here three more o right so let's save it and if I execute our shell script, then in this particular case, you will see it is changing the first occurrence of the O with the J, leaving all the others pattern in the same way as it was originally there. Now suppose if I want to change all, then I can use here double forward slashes, right? In this way. Now it is going to remove the all the occurrence of the O with the character J, right? So you will see these three O are also changing. Now instead of characters, we can also give here strings also. For instance, I can write here today, basically any particular patterns with or without wildcards you can define here. And let's say I'm going to write here tomorrow, 
okay and instead of triple o i'm going to give here another today right so let's save it and if we again execute it then you will see both the occurrence of the today is changing with the tomorrow right and if we provide here only single forward slash for instance in this particular case then only the first occurrence is going to be changed right now suppose if i only want to change the last or the suffix of a particular string or the variables value then we can provide here percent okay percent for the suffix similarly if we want to change for only for the prefix then we can use the hash so let's save it and in this particular case this suffix is going to be matched with our pattern right and it is going to be replaced with the tomorrow so if we execute our shell script then you will see this is not changed but the suffix that has today in it has got changed similarly we can provide here hash also it is going to change the prefix if this particular pattern that is the today pattern exists there so if we save it and again execute our shell script then you will see it has been changed now after that we have the colon and dash operation that can be used to substitute a word when the variable is not defined or it is empty for that let me write here first exit okay so whatever the upcoming operations i am going to use it above it right now i will write here echo dollar where and after colon dash and after that we can define here any substitute word for instance i am writing here cool now what will happen if the variable where is not defined then this value that is the cool is going to be used here in place of it but if the variable is already defined then it is going to use its own value so for that let's save it and if i again execute our shell script then currently our variable where is defined so it is going to print its own value that is whatever is defined in it but suppose if this particular variable is not defined okay i am commenting it out so in this case the value cool is going to be substituted for the variable where okay because it is not defined right now even if it is defined and if it is empty for instance let me write here where and i am giving it value as empty then also the cool is going to be substituted okay so if i again execute it then you will see cool is written now one thing to remember that the value is going to be substituted only it is not getting assigned for instance suppose i am writing here echo dollar and then where then currently since it is empty it is not going to print us anything sorry i forgot to save it right so let me save it and if we again execute it then you will see it is not going to print us anything but when we use the colon and equals to then if the variable is not defined then whatever word we are going to use for the substitution it is also going to be assigned to that particular variable for instance suppose i am writing here echo then dollar where okay currently where is not defined or it is currently empty and then colon equals to and again i am writing here let's say cold and now in this particular case if variable where is not defined or if it is empty then cold is going to be assigned to this variable where okay and if i am going to write here after that echo then dollar where you will see the value is is still the cold it is not just substituted but it is also assigned okay so if we again execute our shell script then you will see that cold is written here because now the value has been assigned to it not only it is substituted so if we want to only substitute the value then we can write here colon dash and if we want to assign it then we can write here colon equals to note this will only works if the variable where is not exist or it is empty right now similar to that we have other operations like echo dollar then where colon and plus suppose if variable exists but we want to substitute it with some other value for this particular case for that we can use here plus okay so currently our variable exists with some value because we had written here where equals to cold we had assigned with some value okay so let me comment this out right and i am also going to comment where equals to empty right in this case currently where is not defined and if i am writing here let's say word okay 
then nothing is going to be happen right because the variable does not exist but suppose if the variable exist okay so let me uncomment it now our variable exists but in this case instead of using here today is sunday today it is going to be substituted with our new value that is the word okay so if we again execute it then it is going to return here word so colon plus means that if the variable exists then substitute its current value with some other value okay notice that it is not replacing the value it is only substituting it temporarily if i again print the value of dollar where then you will see the original value is unaffected right now just like this we have another one that is the colon question mark so let me write here echo dollar and then where colon question mark and after the question mark we can provide here any error message for instance does not exist right so to understand what it does let me write here echo this is good okay so currently our variable where exist and if we save our shell script and execute it then you will see it is printing us the value of that particular variable and after that it is going to the next line also and printing us this is good but suppose if the variable does not exist right so if the variable does not exist in that case it is going to print us this error message and it will terminate our non interactive shell so if i am going to comment this one okay and save it then you will see as soon as this line will be encountered it will check that this particular variable exists or not so currently this variable does not exist so it is going to give us this particular error message and our shell script will get terminated okay and the following code is not going to be executed so if we again execute it then you will see it is giving us the message that where does not exist basically whatever we had defined here and the following code is not getting executed so colon question mark is used if you want to terminate the shell script or non interactive shell when a particular variable does not exist or it is currently empty okay for empty let me uncomment it and if i again save it and execute it then you will see empty also it will give us the error message now just like this there are lot number of other operations that can also be performed if you want to check out all the other operation that can be used in that case you can use the man page of the bash right and you can search for the parameter expansion okay so i'm going to search with the parameter expansion right and let's go further and here are these okay so whatever we had used here for instance colon dash colon equals to colon question mark and many others that we had used in this particular video right you can check this out for more information okay so that's all for today guys i hope you like the video if you have any doubt please comment it down thanks for watching and i have to see in the next video